Today, we're taking a ride on one of the most popular turboprops to ever be used for private flying. Beechcraft's king or family of twin turboprops are widely used for almost any operation, ranging from small corporate chartering to commercial passenger service, all the way to medevac and military use. Today, we'll be revisiting Eccentric Air Service Airline and Advanced Air who operate eight of these. They fly one of the biggest turboprops in the King Air family, the King Air 350. I covered Advanced Air not too long ago over the summer with their Dornier 328 jet on the channel. However, that was a bigger regional jet with a flight attendant serving the cabin. The King Air 350 does not have a flight attendant, so what's the passenger experience going to be like? How comfortable will it be on board since the type is so popular? And how did this compare to a private jet experience? What's going on guys, Casey Farr here and welcome to beautiful Albuquerque, New Mexico. Today, we're going to see how a commercial airline uses that 9 seat King Air and see what it's like on board. But first things first, let's head to the lobby and get breakfast. The plan today is to take it on the hour-long flights down to Carlsbad and back to see what the passenger experience is all about on a commercial King Air. When I last reviewed Advanced Air on the Dornier, the online check-in was unavailable, so I had to do it at the airport in person, and today was no different. They don't have like a sign, so I'll just drop you where the escalators are. Yeah, I think it's just like in the general terminal. They're at like a commuter airline at like a weird like place that's kind of tucked away in the back. After the five minute ride in the crew car, it was time to hunt down the ticket counter. When I flew in last night, it was nowhere to be seen. So let's see if I get better luck this morning. So from my understanding, there are these two sections of ticket counters for all the airlines that fly out of the terminal. And then back here on ground level, there's a ticket counter for the commuter airlines, an example, Advanced Air, because they're the only commuter airline that fly out of here. But further back, Closer to the ramp, there's the ticket counter for Advanced Air. And it is here, it does exist. So maybe after some walking around, we can see what happens and find it. And it was only a matter of seconds before my luck changed for the better. Hi. Good morning. Hi, morning. Uh, can I check in the car's bad, please? Going to cars? Cars bad, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we'll open that about uh, one hour prior to. Sounds good, thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, cool. I'm glad I am. Alright, so we're a little bit early. Checking the car spot doesn't open for another hour. So right now I'm just kinda hanging out in this small hidden away gate area at ground level. And I'm not seeing any sort of TSA here either, except for the one upstairs to get to the gate airlines. But on this one at ground level for the commuter airlines, I'm not seeing any. That was the same deal at the Hawthorne Jet Center when I covered the Dornier over the summer. It was the same deal in Crescent City when we landed. It's the same deal here. And it may or may not be the same deal in cars bad when we get there. But we'll find out and only time will tell with that one. But as of now, just gonna wait until we can check in. And when the time comes, just walk out to the aircraft board and what'll probably feel like no time at all will be in the air. Okay, something really cool that I found is sort of a Albuquerque Aviation History Museum filled with uh, model airplanes. So back there you got anything from commercial all the way to military to, you know, helis and, you know, some commuter and like GA over here. Yeah, you got the uh, Metro down there. You got a Pilatus, got a Cessna down there. But yeah, anything that's anything. Honestly, so yeah, you got private jets, uh, commercial, GA, military, and then even over here, we got a freaking DC-10, so like military transport category, and they also have like these uh, placards and like cards with um, describing that these aircraft have actually been to Albuquerque in real life, and what they're doing here, and why they're here. Like for example, back there, you got the... Uh, United 747-200 uh, that did an Afghanistan military charter from Afghanistan over to Albuquerque so that's really really cool and that's the deal for all of these too and they say 
like who the airline was, what the aircraft is, obviously, and the route they flew, and like why they're here. And yeah, a whole like model airplane museum in the terminal. So yeah, if you're an av geek and have time to kill um, in between flights or before your flight, or even after your flight waiting for your ride, then yeah, come check out this kind of model airplane museum and uh, you can see what it's all about for yourself. I'm okay, how are you, sir? Good. Good. Of course. There you go. Just the backpack and okay. case. Have I have. Remember, there's no overhead. Okay, sounds good. Okay. All right, on second thought, I might have to check my backpack. It's a bit too big. And coming straight into the ramp, the ride to Carlos Bob is spotted. November 395 Alpha Alpha is going to be our star. The 1991 King Air was delivered to a company called Falcon Financial Solutions in Auburn, California before moving over to Advanced Air and Ally. As this is technically a private aircraft, I couldn't find enough to get into the registration history as much as I normally do. I just got that information off the FAA registry. If you know anything else about it, feel free to leave a comment and I'll pin it. Pretty soon, the rather small boarding line of the six other people was forming on the scheduled boarding time, and they're ready for us. And watch your hands, you're going to the very moment. Yeah. Yeah. Big guy behind yeah. the cockpit. Yeah. 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 Come on up. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you later. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Anything happens. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. You would think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like this time? Social media. Oh. Should be really on the way out. Let me get my feet in here. Right. Make it. Go for it, then we can. All good. Can. <laughs> oh, good. Go. Totally good. All there right. we go. Thank you very much. Uh, today, Santana's up front. He's your captain. Take you guys today down to Carl's back. It'll be about an hour in flight. Um, your seat back has a seat card, contains information about our Beechcraft King Air 350, information about life jackets, oxygen, and emergency exits. For today's flight, we ask that you keep your seatbelts fastened for the entire uh, flight. Um, do that by inserting the metal tab into the buckle there, then you can use the strap across your waist. Oh, okay. there you go. Our app boarded on the King Air 350. Got a pretty cool VIP corporate config here with eight seats for up front and for aft, and the two on each side in each section all facing each other with a cool little table and cup holders in the middle of each, and also USBs, so we do have power. And there is a blue light on there indicating that it probably does work. So we can test that out. I can plug my phone in, see if it charges. So yeah, I also didn't pick a very good side of the plane to sit on just because the sun is kind of glaring in my window and making everything backlit, but it is what it is with that. We also have complimentary snacks on this flight, so we do have some sort of food, some sort of drinks that we can get access to for the hour flight we have down to cars bed. So yeah, they're kind of in that sort of like wooden uh, cabinet down there is what the PIC made clear. And once we get airborne, we'll see what they got. But right now, they're going ahead and programming the route and the GPS to get us down there. And we're going to taxi clearance, head out, and we'll be airborne.
Before takeoff, we were in line behind a Cessna 172, asserting our GA dominance. Alright, yes, we are airborne out of Albuquerque and on our way down to Carlsbad. So far, the lighting with the sun has been fine. The sun's been pretty head-on with the aircraft, so with the lighting either side, it's been pretty good and not really blaring at me. Because if you know, when I book flights and choose which side of the plane I sit on, that's kind of how I plan it. Uh, I don't want to sit on the side of the plane that's lit up by the sun and blurring in your face. So I try to avoid that. Like I look at sun calc and see where the sun's going to be at that time of day and plan my side of the plane that I sit on based off of that and facing away from the sun and knowing what side's going to be lit up and what side isn't. But anyway, uh, so far everything's going pretty good. And I can confirm that the USB does in fact work. I just tested it with plugging in my phone. And in a bit, I'll see what they have with the snack and drink choices. So I'll go in there, see what they got, get it out, and uh, probably fold out the table even that we have. And we also have the uh, infamous Beechcraft King Air uh, dimmable window shades that you can pull on it, spin it around, and it'll adjust the dimness of the window or shadiness of the window whatever the correct term of that would be but my one complaint so far is just limited space because uh, the configuration of this all the seats are facing each other and you're just gonna have to work out with your partner across from you just how your legs are gonna be and that your both are gonna be comfortable but so far so good and we'll keep on chugging along on the uh, 40 30 minutes we have left on the cars bed So the situation on the snacks and drinks took me a little bit longer than it should have for me to figure out the drawer system to bust it open but eventually I got it and you get some decent options for drinks you got water, Sprite, Coke, Diet Coke that's about it got myself the uh, classic Diet Coke here no idea where the snacks are the PIC or the FO I should say didn't mention that there were snacks available that are self-serve, but I looked in both cabinets. There are two on other side of the cabin, but they're the same drink selection, water, Coke, Sprite on each side, and I couldn't find this next at all. But anyway, uh, we got the table out, giving us a little more space, making us a little bit more comfortable here. And uh, I will say that it's a lot more comfortable. Um, it does feel like we have more space with that table out, um, putting our stuff on it. But 
There you go. Uh, I don't know what the snack situation is, if they actually do have it, or if we're just, you know, delusional and can't find it, or they just don't have it. But, yeah, just enjoying the views outside and the rest of the way down to Carlsbad. Surprisingly, I was able to get an okay view into the cockpit, but in reality, it was only the throttle cauldron and MFT. I was able to catch them though, loading up the RNAV GPS for runway 3. Goofy Jepson chart. Roswell. I've never been to Roswell, so my first time seeing it was just an hour from the air. Have you guys ever been to Roswell? Let me know in the comments. Beginning our approach, got about 13 miles to go into the airport. A few things I found about the seat is you have a handle and a button on the seat side. So if I pull up on the handle, the seat moves kind of out and in, sideways, out, in, out, in. Uh, just making it easier for you to get out, and I don't really know what other purpose. And just the button to have it reclined. So hold it in as you would. Still going. Yeah. Doesn't go too far back, but it goes back and adds a tiny bit of comfort if anything. But yeah, you got the button and the lever to uh, adjust the seat ever so slightly. And before we knew it, just after playing with my seat, we were midfield on the left downwind. After landing, we were greeted into the ramp by the corporate Oxy Zero E170. I'll be going back up with you guys. I'll just came for the King Air. Okay, cool. Awesome, yeah. yeah. Let's see ya. Uh, what's the deal with the uh, 170? What? What's the deal with the uh, E170 over there? It's hot. It's Oxy what? Oxy oil. Oh, cool, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Albuquerque. Albuquerque? I you guys or someone else? Someone else. Okay, same, same plane though? Yeah, I just want to make sure that nope, it's a plane coming in from Phoenix. Oh, cool, okay. Sure That'll do it. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, as in not, I saw the golf stream coming in, but that was it. That's a speaker that house from Washington, D.C. Oh, really? And then Conoco Phillips owns still one for me. Okay. 
All right, welcome to the small terminal we have here in Carlsbad. So the aircraft I just got off of is going over to Phoenix, and the aircraft I'll be taking back up to Albuquerque is coming from Phoenix. That's going to be November 350 Echo Sierra. So they have each flight, 401 and 402, uh, go from Albuquerque, Carlsbad, Phoenix, and then Phoenix, Carlsbad, Albuquerque. So we're just going to be tacking on the first and second lag of them both. So we're kind of getting the best of both worlds there. So we're going to be getting a, another Beechcraft coming up and taking us back up to Albuquerque. But as of now, that's another half hour out. So I'm just going to hang out here in the terminal, check my bag again into a boarding. I'm going to start on the rally rating for the flight, which will go over on the flight back up to Albuquerque. And we'll go ahead and see how advanced I did on the Beechcraft today. ID, there you go. And I'm just gonna check my backpack. You wanna check it in? Yeah. Okay, that's not real. Cool. This first Massachusetts ID, I've had to make me work a little bit. Really? <laughs> Keep me on your feet. <laughs> all right, that's all good to go. You cool. Go check the bag in. Put it on there. The terminal here is a comfortable chill spot, especially with the tabletop wireless chargers and free Wi Fi. After checking back in, the 30 minutes for the inbound came and went, and the inbound was here. The 14 year old November 350 Echo Sierra will be taking us back up to the Sunport. After they shut down and deplaned from Phoenix, they were ready to board us back on. How are you, sir? Good. All right, welcome aboard King Air 2 of uh, to today, November 350 Echo Sierra. Pretty much the same configuration as the last one. The eight seats with each pair of two facing each other with the table in the middle. Same thing, just slightly different look to the center console. Still got the same USBs and cup holders and everything. Something I didn't notice in the cabinet where the drinks and snacks are. There are snacks, I pulled it out ever so slightly, and I saw that there were chips and stuff in there. I didn't see any drinks, but I didn't look very thoroughly either. So once we get airborne, we can pull that out and uh, see what they got for us. So they didn't have it on the last flight, so that kind of thing isn't guaranteed. Um, I'll cover that in the uh, Raleigh rating once we get to it in the air. Born out of Carlsbad and on our way back up to Albuquerque on this beautiful King Air 350 interior. Got a beautiful wooden center here with the uh, cup holders, fold out table, and uh, in there you got the uh, USBs. And one other really cool thing is you have a bit of a control center down here. You have one at each seat, which shows a lot of really cool stuff. So it's sort of a default screen is showing certain flight information so we got altitude there, ground speed there, 314 knots and 505 kilos, 370 miles per hour so again also in airspeed. speed we got outside air temps so 42 degrees we got altitude distance to destination uh, estimated time so uh, 11 hour so 11 minutes ago we departed and it will be there in 42 minutes. Current time right now is 12.49. So yeah, right then and there are really cool flight uh, parameters. So we'll be there at 121. So we got the flight. 
my information on there as of the information we got from the cockpit wasn't enough because I have a pretty clear view now of the FO's PFD. So yeah, if we go to the home screen, we got all this stuff. How about that? Not quite sure what that is, the lav light, cabin scene. Keep in mind, we have this in every seat, so I'm just not here controlling the cabin. Uh, I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, audio, so we can plug a headphone into here, listen to either some sort of music or ATC audio, I'm not entirely sure. Cabin video, I'm not seeing an IFV anywhere, but that exists. Uh, settings, so the standard brightness, sound, uh, change roll. Information, all that. Window shades, we can adjust the window shade from here. So, go into here, we can either have it clear, so we don't have the um, roll where we just roll it around and adjust it to this. Instead, we adjust it from here, so we can either do it completely dark, and we're going to see the window shade slowly dim itself there kind of as it is on the 787, but that's not what we want, so we'll go back to fully clear. Got these side controls here for either brightness or audio. That's kind of all that does. But yeah, heading back home, we got cabin temperature, which I'm to control. Cabin lights, again, and lab light, which I that is, but yeah. We have this whole thing, whole control, at every single scene. So very cool, corporate aircraft, private aircraft touch we have there. And yes, I just checked into the cabinet and they did in seat socket with snacks and drinks to some magnitude. We just have Cheez-Its and Pretzels for snacks and just Sprite and Coke for drinks. So just know if you can do this, you aren't really guaranteed to have both snacks and drinks. Like for example, on the last one, we just had the Coke products and drinks, but they did stock it a little bit more on this one. So you just have the uh, Cheez-Its and Pretzels as snacks on this one. Maybe we'll get more if we were to go on another King Air flight or Pilatus flight with advanced air. Uh, but on these two specific flights, there weren't that much. And on this one, uh, there weren't that much selection. They were stocked more, but again, not much selection. Just all of like two things to choose from in there. Just the Sprite and Coke and pretzels and Cheez-Its. But it's better than nothing. Uh, I'll take that. Um, really on any of like the major big three, you know, Delta, Alaska, American, whatever. They're the same way. They're not gonna, you know, have everything they're only gonna have like a couple of snacks a couple small bags uh not a couple drinks but you know it's little things on these small eas airline it's gonna be the little things you're not gonna be guaranteed everything like you are on the big three you're not gonna be guaranteed a whole meal but yeah um on this one you do get a little more variety so yeah you can reach into the cabinet get something put on the table and eat up So one really freaking cool thing I found with the seat on this specific aircraft is that you have a handle on the armrest that you pull up. I'll reach down here, pull this up, and it just slides around all really nilly. Twist it, turn it, in, out, and all around. I found myself a little far away from the table, so yeah, now that I slid myself in, I can uh, be closer to it and kind of slide myself in, but pull up on it, and yeah, no, it's all really nilly, slide around. Now that we're getting pretty close back into the Albuquerque area, I'm going to use this time to rate the airline with my Raleigh rating system. Very original because my first name is Raleigh. I use this to rate and review all my flights at the end of every one of my airline reviews. It has six different categories and we rate each parameter of the flight of the airline with each category. So as we get closer and in my Canabacorky and Park, we're going to do that. So let's see how advanced it today with the King Air.
The service was a 10 out of 10. It was pretty standard for an EAS airline. The two pilots on board got us down and up safely, had an efficient safety demo, and drew our attention to the self serve snack and beverages. Something boutique air failed to do when I covered them last year, go check that video out first. They had self serve snacks with passengers on the PC 12, but never let us know. The ground crew also did fine getting us boarded and out on time. The cleanliness was a 10 out of 10. Both the interiors and both planes were beautiful and presented great. This is a private jet, or prop, if you will, so the interior was small, but clean. The airline did a great job at maintaining it. The Wi-Fi was a 0 out of 10, as there was none available. The food was a 7 out of 10. As mentioned, it's going to be random throughout each plane. There's a high chance, really, no matter what aircraft you get, of getting a small selection and a great stock of water and coke products. The chances are less, but are definitely still there of getting a snack selection. I would still recommend bringing a bite on board with you in case you need it if the snacks aren't stocked in your cabin. But if you end up getting them, then that's an added bonus. The entertainment was a 3 out of 10. The only thing provided by the airline or manufacturer is the possibility of having a way to charge your phone. No built-in IFE, that goes without saying, or no Wi-Fi. Other than the potential of having your phone charging, there really isn't anything. So, I would download content or bring on board reading material to accompany that. However, this doesn't necessarily mean a bad flight experience. The scenery views of out the window were spectacular. Of course, this is weather dependent, with adding that beautiful wing and prop view. The other big thing for an av geek, or really, honestly anyone, would be that clear view into the cockpit, getting that live flight information from the avionics, and seeing the pilots in action. The seat was a 9 out of 10. Space was limited, but I think Beechcraft did well at configuring the 8 seats in a comfortable way. As shown and demonstrated, it could get awkward getting comfortable with your partner working at Logram, but once figured out, it feels casual. The big fold-out table does help quite a bit for storage and adds leg space. Having the seat slide in or out was an interesting but effective touch to make getting in or out easier. The recline wasn't much, but it was definitely something. It was fun having such a flexible seat moving around on the second flight, but of course this isn't guaranteed and is dependent on the aircraft. The fold-out table, cup holders, and USB-As are found at each and every pair of facing seats. I always say this on any flight when it comes to charging of the seat, but just because it worked on these specific legs never means it's guaranteed to work. I always recommend putting some battery in your phone before boarding, just in case the power is unavailable. On the second aircraft, there is also a universal power outlet below, but again, not guaranteed. The small control center at each seat was a core touch. However, I really couldn't find much other use for it other than showing random flight information or adjusting your window shade. The cushioning on the seats themselves were pretty good and comfortable. The only thing really bringing down the comfort factor is just the limited legroom, so the overall rating is going to be a 6.5 out of 10. Yeah, that's all that matters, How do you like flying the King Air? I like it. Awesome. It's a good plane after doing flight instruction on little, little small Cessnas and stuff. Have a good one. Alright, here we are back down at the Sunport. I hope you guys enjoyed my review on the Advanced Air King Air as much as I did on the two flights. It's always fun hearing uh, from the people who haven't been on the EAS flights of how much they enjoyed it and how much they enjoyed flying to the destination as opposed to flying. As in, oh, we could have driven three to four hours driving here, sometimes more than that, when it only took us less than an hour, hour, two hours to get here by plane and this was so much nicer so much easier than driving 
and of course that came again on today's flights and also the Beechcraft. it was a corporate plane it was basically a private jet but obviously a prop private jet interior um private jet kind of feels and interior uh which was really really cool especially just as an av geek the fact of it just being a beachcraft a small twin turboprop was really really fun and new aircraft type for me too new ga aircraft type for me too but with that uh the sort of semi-private small private interior which was a lot of fun but other than that i hope you guys enjoyed uh coming with me on the car is bad and i look forward to seeing you guys on the next airline bye for now